we start off with a, a quote from the externalization of the hierarchy by Ellis Bailey, where DK says, I tell you that humanity is everywhere spiritually minded and that the new race, the coming civilization and the new age culture will be found throughout the world, the universal inheritance of the human race. But everywhere, humanity is the victim of propaganda, propaganda which can only be seen in its true light when men and women think in terms of human liberty, when they, take, when they together take the needed steps to ensure human happiness and learn in so doing to face world conditions as they are, not hiding their heads in a dream world of their own making. If you have the Bailey books or the, the CD for the Bailey books and you're typing propaganda, there are many, many references throughout the blue books on propaganda. And some of you know that I have written a lot about it as well. Here's just a few from many that you can find on my website at esotericastrologer.org. Um, under search by subject, you can go to media and communications. And here's a few that I selected from there that have the word propaganda in them, but there are a lot more as well. The dilemma of good and bad news, propaganda. The disease of compromised media. Facebook's meta-media mayor. Gemini rules mass media propaganda. Gemini UK propaganda publications. Good news, bad news, informing ourselves correctly. Let Maya flourish and deception rule, not materialistic forces and misleading media. Maya of world media and the CIA. McCarthyism of the disinformation dozen. Media communications and propaganda. Media propaganda, wake up call for millions. Pisces, world glamour and propaganda. Plato's cave, belief versus knowledge. Propaganda, the crisis of world glamour. Propaganda and, and the esoteric community, mass hypnosis in 2021. Propaganda, let Maya flourish and deception rule again. Thinking, discernment and media propaganda. Thought control by dominating groups. Who are the deluders of souls? It's a huge subject and it has been very concentrated in this last century. Here we have a couple of interesting posters that represent arguably good propaganda on the left when America was being roused to, to uh, join forces, the Allied forces in World War II. Wake up America, civilization calls for every man, woman and child. How relevant is that today? can ask rhetorically. And on the right, we can have a, a good example of bad propaganda, of the glamour of authority. A dentist says it's okay to smoke viceroys. <laughs> and you see many of these classic old posters from the 50s and 60s where a doctor or a dentist or some other professional is saying it's okay to smoke camels or whatever brand that they're, they're pushing. So we've come a long way since then, but other kinds of propaganda have infused and seeped into the, into the field since that time and become far more refined than, uh, than those more sort of blatant forms of propaganda in those days. So recent uh, examples. On the left here we have, are you feeling fine? You could still be infected with COVID-19. Up to half of, of all COVID-19 patients never feel symptoms, but are contagious nonetheless. And on the right, we have, my mask protects you, your mask protects me. Since then, the last few years, for those who have done their research and the overwhelming avalanche of evidence, all these things have been proven to be false. Indeed, the Belgian psychologist Matthias Desmet has said, has called this mass formation, which is another name for mass hypnosis. 
And this has led from the COVID crisis with almost a seamless segue into Ukraine and a one-sided approach of promoting uh, that Ukraine is the underdog and so forth. And so various zodiac signs are related to, to um, propaganda. <coughs> Gemini is one of the main ones, of course, is related to all three themes of media, communications and propaganda, with the addition of the sign Scorpio, his keynote on the ordinary wheel is that may have flourish and deception rule. And of course, Pisces and Neptune are also prominent in their lower expression. Gemini is known in its lowest expression as deceptive or two-faced, the trickster, the prankster, the con man, the chameleon, or chameleon. Scorpio was the sign Sun sign of enigma of the Enigma machine inventor Arthur Scherbius, and also Edward Bernays, the father of propaganda, picked it up here in the right hand corner. I've, you can find uh, this is from an article on my website. There's a few couple of articles I think I've written about Bernays, <coughs> who, uh, of course, the the Nazi propagandists drew upon in uh, World War II. The other Scorpio entities, the CIA is Scorpio Rising. Um, Anthony Fauci, Scorpio Moon, Bill Gates, Sun Venus and Saturn Scorpio, just to give a few prominent examples. But of course, um, we all have Scorpio at some level in our horoscopes. And so I don't mean to tar all these signs with the same brush, but they inherently have those, those predispositions, depending on what stage of unfoldment that you're at in your soul evolution. Of course, the well-known poster down here, William Casey, CIA director in 1981, said, and this is a fact, we will know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. Quite an extraordinary statement. And the CIA really is, has been quite a malevolent entity, not in the best interest of that great country called the United States of America. It's become a rogue entity unto itself. Propaganda is about promotion, not necessarily of untruths, but also the timeless verities. DK mentioned himself in the in the teachings uh, uh, about the propaganda that needed to be generated by the new group of world service re regarding the Atlas Wisdom teachings and the spread of, of his writings. When considering the evolution of media and propaganda from early last century to the sophisticated refinement it has reached today, aided by many new mind-reading technologies and techniques, it is staggering how easily humanity has been kept in the dark and under control of the dark forces. Really staggering. This mind-reading technology is just, is, it's almost the stuff of science fiction, but it actually is, uh, it does work. Facebook and Google has poured billions of dollars into research of this. And in fact, are using the, the uh, the, the social media as pretty much uh, millions of people as, a, as experimental guinea pigs for this. As some of you may have actually experienced, but that's another story, and I, I do talk about it extensively in my articles on my website if you wish to follow that up. So propaganda and cultural conditioning can influence a person's entire life so much so that they are un entirely unaware that they are living in a bubble of, bubble of illusion. This applies to all of us to some extent or other, depending again on our unfolded consciousness and our soul evolution. The Tibetan tells us that 75% of humanity are still polarized in Atlantean conscious, consciousness, that is emotionally polarized, hence very much subject to glamour because glamour is the form of illusion that works out primarily on the astral plane. Neither are the spiritually advanced immune from glamour. 
Hence the Tibetan's book on the problem, which is divided into three sections of illusion, glamour, and maya. Illusion on the mental plane, glamour on the astral plane, maya on the physical plane. This book here that you can see on your left, Glamour, a War Problem. So a shocking example has been in the past few years of COVID propaganda, for instance, now overwhelmingly demonstrated to be an attack by the material forces on humanity, is how many spiritual groups and leaders fell obediently into line with the mainstream narrative and still do. Estimated about 70% of these spiritual groups, so-called. It's been quite a puzzling situation for many of us in this last few years. And, of course, it has created division. Division being one of the main glamours that we tackle in our glamour meditation group. On the right here, you can see this diagram where the um, glamour of authority, so-called destroyers of souls, as DK mentions, is the takes the first aspect or the first ray position in this triangle, the glamour of authority. And what we've seen in the last few years, of course, is the glamour of medical and so-called scientific authority, or better described as scientism, a cult in a sense. Um, and then we have the, the love wisdom point, division, which is basically uh, divide and conquer, um, set people against each other through social engineering and propaganda. You're either with us or you're against us and all those kind of mantras. <clears throat> so these three glamours, three points, are umbrellas for other glamours. For instance, the um, division relates to hatred, uh, the obverse of love wisdom. <clears throat> and division, of course, creates great hatred and bitterness. We've seen a lot of that, and we have all experienced it, no doubt, at some point in our lives, perhaps magnified even more in the last few years. Third point, we have manipulation, active intelligence, ray, uh, related to this, the, the manipulators of souls, whereas the second ray uh, types are the deluders of souls and the first ray types, the destroyers of souls. This is from one of the Tibetan's books where he has some extra commentary on that should you choose to go into it. So and down here we have the three main glamours correspond to the three aspects of the triangle, will, love and intelligence, authority, control, Division, separation, manipulation, devious and continuous. These glamours cover selfish global domination, fear, which of course is at the centre of the triangle. It's like the last head of the hydra, or the, the, the head of the hydra that must be buried. Um, these glamours cover selfish global domination, fear, materialistic planning, dark strategies, fascism, totalitarianism, misuse of science and money, the forced reset, etc. And this is what we've seen. Media and communications, of course, comes under the aegis of the third ray of active intelligence, uh, as does uh, technology to a great extent as well. And what we've seen in the last few years, but it's been going on for decades, but has really accelerated and expanded in the last few years, is propaganda wars, the battle for hearts and minds, the, the way to, to shape human thinking according to a certain ideology. And we're all victims of it to one degree or another, especially depending on how thick or um, great our diet is in mainstream news, television particularly, of course. <clears throat> so, the book Glamour, A World Problem, which I summarized in, into three classes in my course because I just felt that the such an important book. This was inspired about 20 years ago. Um, and DK gives the formulas there for 
in the, uh, for the step to take and the visualizations to do to to uh, conquer personal glamour and world glamour. So in the last few years, I've had numerous conversations with co-workers, some of whom were leaders of large spiritual groups, who said things like, what's wrong with those good, decent people from CNN? To my astonishment. Nothing, of course. Nothing is wrong with these people. They are mainly people of goodwill, intelligent, loving, and loving, but perhaps lacking a discrimination that allows them to be used as robots working in the news misinformation mill. And it's these very news um, outposts that coin the terms misinformation or fact checker and, all, and so forth. This is such a, a, a nasty paradox. And we have great services such as uh, the ABC in Australia, the Australian Broadcasting Commission, the, the British Broadcasting Commission in Britain and so forth, that although you know, have been going for almost a century or over a century in some cases, that people relied on for news in, and, and had a very affectionate relationship with, you know, for instance, the ABC is called Auntie in Australia. And then at some point in the last couple of decades, those stations, both of them, including, of course, many other stations all around the world in the United States and so forth, became far more propagandized and taken over by, by uh, forces that were, were trying to steer a certain narrative and um, also by excluding certain news stories, sh shaping the narrative further. And so we see this plethora of these news networks here and these, these different um, icons below, all the ones that we know. Um, so people who were watching the ABC, BBC, CNN, you know, in the last few decades and on a daily basis, I know some people in the United States have two or three TVs going all day with the, with the uh, uh, tune to CNN, um, that one, the, the once relatively reliable and accurate news has shifted gears in the last couple of decades to be far more propagandized, but without really the realization on the on the parts of the consumers uh, of of that information changing, and hence being duped or lulled into a a sense of oh this is the way the world is, and without taking the time or the energy to explore alternative media, and many of us in the esoteric community have been caught in this, like the deer, the proverbial deer in the headlights. Um, and so when this, this um, great propaganda war stepped up pace in 2020, many people were not willing to accept the non-mainstream version or perspective of, of what was unfolding because of those good, decent people from CNN. In the coronavirus saga, we saw the spiritual community along with the rest of humanity succumb to an unprecedented media bombardment of propaganda and fear. It was this fear that, that drove many erstwhile, uh, otherwise um, discriminating people to get the jab, to protect themselves. The extraordinary division of opinions and perceptions is derived essentially from two poles of conventional versus alternative medias. One camp has relied upon a trusted media that has been passively absorbed for decades without any real questioning, like a pair of comfortable old slippers. Whilst the other camp has informed itself across a broad spectrum of mainstream and alternative media, those individuals have found mainstream programming insufficient to their needs realizing also that the concentration of media ownership lies in the hands of only several companies, limiting a broader range of viewpoints. 
Another third group has remained neutral and their reticence in taking a position is a deafening silence, in fact. Can we remind ourselves of some of these shocking images that we saw in Australia and other countries around the world as the, the, uh, the nation went crazy, basically, trying to enforce these laws that were imposed by various bodies around the world. It caught everyone short, so to speak. Hence, during the coronavirus crisis, those who have gone along with media and medical propaganda have based their decisions about mask wearing, social distancing or vaccination upon continuous consumption of a narrowly corralled newspaper, media, internet and television perspective. They have thoughtlessly lent their voices to the mass public chorus of conspiracy theory. They have dismissed out of hand thousands of other perspectives by medical and scientific experts around the world without bothering to read and reflect upon those views. They have also not considered the alarming limitation of liberty, such as loss of the four freedoms and how governments around the world have illegally imposed new laws. Freedom from fear. Fear was the main fundamental bottom line point of least resistance that these manipulators of humanity went for, creating fear. That was their main weapon. Then they created division. So freedom of speech, which is still under threat, under grave threat, in fact, because we are seeing censorship going on everywhere. Of trying of of the those who are in power trying desperately to maintain their narrative, and yet one of the, the most amazing things that has occurred is that this suppression of the um, of alternative voices has spawned a whole army of independent, really riveting and exciting media commentators, independent media commentators. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship. What did we see during the COVID crisis? You weren't allowed to go to church or the synagogue or the mosque. Extraordinary. This, is, this was a deliberate ploy. Freedom from want. And we're seeing a lot of people suffering now through uh, lack of food, lack of resources, the disruption of the supply chain. Uh, or at least that excuse for jacking up prices and or doubling prices in many cases. This is this is one of the main things that's happening in Europe at the moment. People paying outrageous prices for the, their electricity, and the government's not doing anything about this. And keeping up the propaganda program I might add that right now in Britain, so much of this is being revealed through the um, the. Uh, the tweets of one Matt Hancock, who was one of the main promoters of the propaganda for the British government, the information that's coming out is extraordinary because it proves what we all knew at that time was occurring. If you were keeping up with some of the British newspapers, uh, absolutely extraordinary. So basically the entire population of Britain and other parts of the world coming to realise that they were conned, completely conned, by a mass campaign, a mass formation, a mass hypnosis based on fear. Hence, this portion of the spiritual and wider community have scant information about what is really going on and have made up their minds on the authority of science and other pseudo-authoritative bodies. Humanity is very innocent and naive in many ways. We tend to think that, you know, and value, of course, the inherent goodwill and honesty of other human beings. But unfortunately, that is not the case. There is a small and powerful percentage of human beings who uh, do not care about that and wish to trample over human rights and human dignity and basically exploit humanity. 
media ownership is now concentrated into, into just several BMS corporations giving the power to send one bland message to the masses. Here we have Comcast, News Corp, Disney, Viacom, Time Warner, and CBS as some of the major companies in the USA and with many uh, sub-companies beneath them. These few corporations work closely with other larger entities such as, such as WHO, WEF, CDC, and also the corrupted United Nations, I might add. Charitable foundations, trusts, medical research laboratories, university institutions. In other words, the problem is so widespread and deeply ingrained in our entire Western culture. It's going to take a long time to undo all this, to untangle this terrible web of deception. As the old saying goes, what a tangled web we weave and once we practice to deceive. And this deception has been going on for decades. <clears throat> and I hope you don't think I'm sounding conspiratorial saying this. These are just simply facts that, that exist for those with the eyes to see and, and the energy to research these things. And so we have the various aspects of glamour I referred to before, illusion on the mental plane, glamour on the astral plane, maya at the etheric level, the dweller on the threshold, the physical brain consciousness. The opposite of these things, the opposite of illusion, intuition, spiritual perception, the objective, dispelling, the battleground, the path of initiation and the world of ideas. This is where we're right at now. This is war on the mental plane um, in the world of ideas. This is the schism, the split upon the mental plane between the, the lower mind and the higher mind, it's a Technique, contemplation by the soul. Now, <clears throat> at, you know, we're looking here at the path of initiation because illusion only really affects those who are, who are going, who are at this level of, of unfoldment. But glamour is the main factor that affects most of humanity, but also the path of discipleship. The opposite of, of glamour is illumination, lucidity, vision, where the mental forces are brought to bear in this, uh, to, to focus upon the astral plane to dissolve and dissipate, disintegrate those glamours with, with mental energy. The emotional body can only be controlled from the mental plane, so it makes sense that glamour can only be dissipated through the illumined mind the illumination of the mind, the lucidity, the vision. And hence we have the path of discipleship, meditation, holding the mind steady in the light, something we remind ourselves of the various stages of meditation. When we're concentrating, then we realize that we've just drifted off for five or ten minutes into some fantasy <laughs> and brought ourselves back to center, holding the mind steady in the light. And then we have Maya, the etheric plane, inspiration is the, being the opposite, devitalization, the objective to devitalize Maya. Of course, the battleground being the path of probation or purification. Technique, occultism, force manipulation. Occultism meaning the hidden mysteries, the ageless wisdom, the, the uh, techniques we've been given in esoteric education, to recognize, uh, to perceive, and to use as tools. And we are all attempting to do this in one way or another. So you can see the path of probation and the path of discipleship overlap each other in many ways. Many of us on the path of probation and purification since the first initiation and as we approach the second initiation, which can take place over up to 30 lifetimes, it is speculated, um, towards the path of discipleship, um, 
we can be subject to many of these glamours. In fact, we're told by the Tibetan that um, the esoteric groups are the most glamoured. Occult bodies and esoteric groups are at this time the most glamoured of any world groups. It's partly because they have that esoteric information. And yet it builds a false sense of security in terms of not guarding the, the, um, the doors of thought, if you like. So this diagram here, I'm not sure we can see it or not, but it's, um, it's one I used in one of my newsletters, talking about the astral plane, the various subplanes. And in fact, it's back to front in many ways. The physical plane should be at the bottom and the mental plane should be at the top. But essentially, um, talks about the astral plane and the lower mind and the space in between being desire mind or kama manas, which is where many of us, uh, we, we work in the world every day of kama manas. We're plugged into that. <clears throat> And of course, the astral plane where most of 75% of humanity are polarized still. So we need to develop discrimination and discernment to break through mental illusion. So it's easy to see how, how well-meaning disciples can be easily deluded through their assimilation of ideas throughout their lives. I think all of us to some degree or another, have been affected like this. And how those ideas, not necessarily of high quality originally, became further distorted and compromised through the personal lens of life experience and misplaced idealism. This quality of the sixth ray of idealism, which many of us are conditioned by, either at a national level or at a personal level in our astral bodies or personalities, and how groups with, with which one may have been associated affirmed and confirmed belief in the rightness of their views, when in fact they were being played all along by the social engineers and propagandists. And this can apply particularly to the area of the very divisive topic of politics. Political idealism can be a trap that can... That can uh, hold us for lifetimes, if not for one lifetime. Because the other people and events during that life of political idealism to a particular faction, the left or the right or some other faction in between, um, was affirmed by the, the group at the time and events that occurred in that particular nation. and may have had a lot of truth in it, but the, the, the threads of grey that run through our perception are the things that um, can hold us in thrall to these illusions and glamours. Here's where the diverse views about left and right politics come into play, Democrat, Republican, Tory, Labour, etc., <clears throat> where illusions are fostered that if you do not buy the COVID narrative, you must be a Trump supporter. I had that leveled at me by, to my astonishment again, by, by other fellow esotericists who told me I was selfish for not wearing the mask. You know, and I don't mean this to be a complaint about that whole thing, but we can't forget what happened in the last three years. The truth is coming further, further out into the open. And um, this wound that has opened up must be healed. And it, it may take a decade or so to, to really, for all of humanity to realize what's happened here. That if you believe the pro Ukraine narrative is a pack of lies, then you're anti American or anti democracy. Remember, I said before, all of a sudden, the COVID narrative uh, slipped into the background and almost merged seamlessly with 
rah, 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 Ukraine. Extraordinary piece of social engineering there that occurred with, of course, the mass media um, pumping out the, the mantra. So we can see how in the last few years, due to the astral plane's propensity for inversion, because it reverses reality of the astral plane, aided by strong simulation from lower Neptune and the materialistic forces themselves, that everything has been turned upside down, inside out, back to front. A phrase that I keep on finding myself uh, reflecting upon. And hence, what does that cause? Chaos. Chaotic thinking, chaotic, chaotic lifestyles. Um, and in the meantime, these forces have also attempted to distract humanity with so many media distractions on your telephone, with this or that app, um, continuously feeding us uh, a very bad diet of uh, entertainment, if you like, so-called, that Dennis touched upon yesterday in his talk. Uh, that has created an erosion of values and corruption of thinking globally, but more evident in some countries than others. And this is all part, of course, of the Kali Yuga cycle that we are in at the moment that uh, has uncanny when you read some of the verses from the from the ancient Hindu texts about what will happen in the Kali Yuga, it's happening right now. So we are all being played, says this poster. Divide and conquer mechanisms, skin color, nationality, sexual identity, religion, language, profession, class, social customs, political identity. Keep us fighting with each other. This is part of the, the game plan of some of these forces who choose to manipulate humanity. And again, this is not paranoid conspiracy theory. This is actually happening. For the past few years, there's been a widespread infiltration of an end, particularly exploitive agenda into all nations by cabals, world bodies, corporations, and governments. The Tibetan talks about these cabals, and I have quoted him extensively in the last few years uh, from his commentaries in mid-20th century or early to mid-20th century that are still so fresh and applicable for today. These new fascist, fascists mostly do not have the appearance of a Hitler bogeyman. They will look and sound fair and reasonable, good, decent people dressing up their plans and ideologies that should be desired and are politically correct. We have these influences, such as George Soros and his foundation, is one of the most insidious ones on the planet, but there are many, many others. He's just the, the visible tip of the iceberg. The world has been deliberately confused, confounded, and divided by the above-mentioned forces in order to dominate, control, and exploit humanity. Yes, there, are, there is a planetary evil, and the reason why this is happening now is because these forces know that for the first time in thousands and thousands of years, the hierarchy is about to make a decision of when to externalize and walk amongst humanity again, which has not happened since the Great War in Atlantis, of which these past two world wars were a recapitulation of. That's why we are where we are right now. So at this critical juncture in history leading up to the great event of the 2025 conclave, communities cannot allow the forces of separativeness to succeed in their task. Division, divide and conquer, the oldest trick in the book. And finally, 
I'll leave you with this passage from Externalization of the Hierarchy by the Tibetan. I seek to see you free yourself from the condition where you are swayed by propaganda of a political, national, or religious kind and deciding for yourself where you, as a soul, must stand in this world crisis and on which side you will place the emphasis of any influence you may wield. I would have you note where your highest idea, ideals will lead you and whether the springs of your life's decisions and attitudes are truly pure and unadulterated. So we have a few minutes left, I believe, before the break, for any comments or questions. And I'm just going to the chat now where Robin says, several reliable alternative, alternative media sources you trust, Philip. Yes, there are, there are many, in fact. Uh, let me try and recall a few off the top of my head. Um, uh, Max Blumenthal and Aaron Mate are brilliant on global he he hegemony. That's the grey zone. The grey zone, thank you. Um, we have uh, Patrick Henningsen, 21st Century Wire. There are many. There's Del Big Tree, of course, has been giving some brilliant commentaries. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Um, there's about 20 or 30 I could name. Uh, there's the Redacted Show, which is pretty basic, but it's, it's pretty good for what it does. Um, it, it calls out the, the liars, basically, and, and attempts to tell the truth. We have various commentators, um, such as Colonel Douglas McGregor, who some of you ridicule, but I think is a sound Spain voice as a commentator, although he gets stuff wrong sometimes, as they all do. Uh, Scott Ritter, another one, retired um, US uh, weapons inspector. That's just particularly to do with that conflict, but of course we're talking generally on a global scale here as well. So um, the Guardian used to be a good newspaper in Britain, but it's it's just a complete the worst propaganda rag in the, on the planet now. It's a, it's absolutely astonishing just how how blatant the lies and innuendo are there. So that's the short answer to that one. Um, don't get me started. <laughs> but um, our consortium news. Thank you, Kate. Um, strategic culture and of course some of these news outlets will they'll say oh that's that's right wing nazi stuff or you know that's super left wing these are some of the the, the counter arguments that people try and dismiss or undermine uh, a quite valuable news source with and 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 there we have the propaganda wars um the other one i'm thinking of is uh james corbett the Corbett Report, brilliant. And he brings together many other good uh, commentators. Um, there was another group associated with them, um, The Last American Vagabond, brilliant show. Who is that woman who does the, um, she's just written a few books. She's interviewed there uh, anyway. Ines says in the chat, uh, it, at present, it's very hard to find reliable sources in Portugal. And yes, from what TV I've seen in Portugal, it's all the same um, blather that comes through the... Um, and in fact, there was a Portuguese version of CNN, which just gives you the prepackaged uh, narrative. Uh, Kate says, my two suggestions have websites. Of course, many of you here I know are familiar with some of these sources anyway. But I know that a lot of the esoteric community still watch their CNBC, um, 
the CNN, um, for their news. And, and even if you think you might be filtering out with your own discernment and intuition, I find that there can still be an in, insidious uh, effect, influence that can, that can come from, from this. So you have to really make an effort to go out there and go beyond. Even Democracy Now!, a once good station, and PBS have all been compromised in one way or another. They still have good shows, but but um, you can see that what they don't report is is a, a glaring omission in many cases. And of course, all the reporters and journalists in the, in America, except for people like Matt Taibbi, for instance, uh, are ignoring uh, stories. And I'm not asking tough questions. They're asking softball questions. They're, they're not journalists. They are just simply serving the narrative as, as program robots, really. So anyway, um, that finishes my spiel. Um, we don't have any other, anything else in the chat. If there's any other questions, we can perhaps take one more question or comment. I think a few others for current right now is economist Jeffrey Sachs, practical realist uh, Jeffrey John Sachs. Mearsheimer. Yes, John Mearsheimer. And, um, Professor John Mearsheimer from Chicago University is absolutely brilliant and impartial. He's one of the few impartial commentators, I think, on the war in Ukraine and, and Russia. I've promoted his videos several times in my newsletters. Um, yeah, Hudson's amazing. Michael Hudson sure. says, Kate, on World Economics, the Hudson Report, I think it's called, or something like that. Yes. I mean, it, I think it's just really good to watch Chinese news and alternative news and yeah. then see what the patterns are with CNN. Because, you know, the old journalists were blue collar. They did it because they loved getting information out. The yeah. new journalists are all trained in Harvard. And they get millions of dollars right away. So yeah. it's hard to... Be the, the corruption of money has, has pretty much, you know, the, the media owns these people and they do what they're told. Robin Gross says, thank you for the confirmation of my intuitive sense of worthy sources. 